Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shalom Yimini. Each week, we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find inspiration that will complement your daily life and intensify your connection to God. This week's Parsha Perspective is dedicated in memory of Shlomo ben Edward. May his soul be uplifted and his memory a blessing. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Cohen family. May Hashem bless them with much health, success, and happiness. This week's Torah portion is Parsha's Kitetze. Our Parsha contains over 70 laws, and we begin with the laws of a soldier who wants to marry a female captive of war. Moshe continues with the rule that a firstborn son always has a right to a double portion of his father's inheritance. Many of our Parsha's notable mitzvahs are returning a lost object to its owner, Hashavah Saveda, the obligation to send away the mother bird before taking her young, Shalua Chakan, and the law against wearing shotness, any garment that contains a mixture of wool and linen. The Parsha concludes with the essential mitzvah of remembering what Amalek did to the Jewish nation during their journey throughout the desert. However, a question comes to mind. Our Parsha begins with the Pasuk, Ki Seitze when you go to war against your enemies, God will deliver them into your hands and you will take captives. But why did Moshe use the words kiseitze when you go out instead of the common Hebrew word for waging war, nil cham? Rashi on that Pasuk explains that the reason Moshe used the term kiseitze when you go out because he is speaking about a voluntary war. For there are two types of wars in the Torah. An obligatory war and a volunteer war. During an obligatory war, every single Jewish soldier from each tribe is mandated and required to fight. An example of such a war is the battles against the seven nations of Canaan and Amalek. But during an optional war, like David Amalek's war for the sake of expanding Eretz Yisrael, participation is purely voluntary. Nevertheless, the rules, requirements, and standards apply to all soldiers fighting on behalf of the Jewish nation. However, the Chida Rav Chaim Yosef Azulai, in his Sefer Nacha Kadmonim, gives a deeper and more powerful explanation. He writes that not only are there two types of wars, but rather two separate and very different methods of fighting the battle. The first method is going to war with a mindset of war. Simply put, it is a mentality of vengeance, violence, and savagery. It is an attitude and anger that leads to desolation, death, and misery. On the other hand, the second approach is fighting a war just for the sake of security and peace. It is an ethos of less destruction and ruin and more construction and improvement. The Chida explains that Moshe used the term Kiseitze rather than Ilham, the Hebrew word for raging war, so that the Jewish nation never goes to battle with a mindset of war. For part of the Jewish people's mission is to be a shining example of morality in this chaotic and corrupt world. As much as relates the laws of wars at the end of last week's Torah portion, the Jewish people must always offer peace terms before engaging in battle. They may not cut down fruit trees when laying siege to a city. They must fight war with a moral mindset. In our daily life and during this decisive time, it is ever more prevalent that we be a beacon of morality and kindness. This can be achieved by appreciating all the differences that make us an individual. And when we are united, we can accomplish goals far beyond our wildest imagination. There is an amazing quote by President and General Dwight D. Eisenhower. I hate war only as a soldier who lived it can, as one who has seen its brutality, its violence, and its stupidity. Have a great weekend and a good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to the Parsha Perspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.